introduce Jack Morgan. He, he was chairman of the uh, 9th District campaign for President Trump, and he is now 9th District chairman for C Corey Stewart's campaign, and we're glad that uh, he and Corey are here with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. I'll tell you what, you know what I love? I love America. I love the fact that we can show up here and do what we do, and our fine friends over there can show up and do what they do. As long as they keep it peaceful, it's all good. God bless y'all over there, but I'm telling you why I'm here. I think they're here for a different reason, but I'm here because my president is actually going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. He's doing exactly what I supported him for. So I don't care what the liberals say. I don't care what the fake news and the lying media says. I don't care what the Democrats and even some of the Republicans say. I really don't care. I supported Donald Trump because this country was broken and we need somebody to fix it. Our health care is broken and we need somebody to fix it and Donald Trump is going to do it. And we need strong Republicans, Republicans like Morgan Griffith, to stand behind yeah. Donald Trump. So I support our congressman when he gets behind our president. And I am excited for the first time in a long time to finally have somebody in Washington that's looking out for us. To finally have someone in Washington who will actually do what they campaigned on. I don't know about you, but I'm sick of lying politicians. I'm sick of them telling me one thing on the trail and doing something in D.C. And God bless Donald Trump for doing exactly what he said. I am more happy with this president in 30 days, I'll go ahead and say it, than I've been with any president in 30 years. Finally. We have a man who's got some guts, who will look at the Democrats, who will look at the John McCain type Republicans and tell them to get out of the way. I'm going to make America great again. God bless him. And I tried to get out of politics. Y'all might know I used to be the district chairman for the party for a couple terms, and I really got frustrated. But man alive, when Donald Trump came along, whoo! It fired me back up again, and I mean, I got in with everything I had, and I thought I was going to get out after we got him in D.C. Because I said, you know what? We finally got a leader. We're going to clean up that swamp. We're going to clean up that D.C. swamp. But I got to looking, and you know what? That Richmond swamp, it's closer than the D.C. swamp, and I smell it even worse than I could the one in D.C. So just, just getting a president isn't enough. We have to have a governor in Richmond that will work with Donald Trump. We have to have not just a Republican. There's plenty of those running. We have to have a real conservative, and there's a few conservatives, but on top of a conservative, we have to have a real fighter. And let me tell you what, this guy that I'm partnering up with right here is the hardest fighting man I've ever seen. I watched him go to Charlottesville and get surrounded by a bunch of nuts. They weren't like these nice protesters who are wonderful people. They were a bunch of crazy, liberal, psycho nuts who chased us around with, with bullhorns right in his ear, probably deafened it because they don't want to hear the truth. They want to silence it. And most politicians will allow them. They allow the loudest voice to shut them down. Not this man, not Corey Stewart. He is the hardest fighting conservative I've ever seen, and that's why I jumped back in again and why I'm supporting him for governor. And I'm asking you to join me and join Charlie and Don and all the others around here that have endorsed him and are working for him and support Corey Stewart to be the next governor of Virginia. Thank y'all so much. Corey Stewart. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. And thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie, for organizing this. But hello, Abingdon. How y'all doing? Are you ready to take back the Commonwealth of Virginia? Good, because that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do that, and we're going to start it right here in Southwest Virginia. You know, last year, doesn't, doesn't it, isn't it great that when you wake up in the morning, and sometime mid-morning you realize, holy smokes, we have a real president of the United States of America. Yeah. Now, as good conservatives, you probably didn't watch the Oscars last night. No. no. Some of you might have. I mean, these lunatics on the left, they've gone completely nuts. I mean, literally, they're crazy. As, 
You know, as Jack said, we were up there. We were up there in Charlottesville, and I don't normally want to comment on anybody's appearance. It's just not my way. But the most scary thing of all those liberal lefties that were up there in Charlottesville was a bearded woman. I'm not kidding. I'm not just talking about a couple of whiskers. I mean, she had a full beard. I mean, these people are crazy, crazy, crazy people. Am I kidding? Am I kidding? She had I mean, a full beard. Anyway, that kind of reminds me of Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> you know, so last night, I don't know if you heard this, but they can't get anything straight as they're complaining about Trump and every single speech. I mean, can you imagine this? Somebody comes to our country, gets an award from Iran, a terrorist sponsor state, and complains about President Trump. That's just not right. That's not right. The guy should have stayed in Iran. And then anyway, at the Academy Awards, they read the wrong name of the wrong movie that wins it. They've completely lost their minds. And then during the uh, in memoriam uh, part of the, uh, I actually kind of watched, I like watching that section. I didn't watch it last night. But they actually put a person up there, I forgot her name, Patty or something like that. And they said in memoriam, they put her, her mug up there. And you know what? She was still alive. She was still alive. She's still alive. So the left have gone crazy, uh, and that's just fine with us. Now, because they know that the Democratic Party, now let me say something about the Democratic Party. A lot of our grandparents, a lot of our parents, and maybe even some of you at one time were Democrats. But you know something? That Democratic Party is gone. That Democratic Party does not exist anymore. The Democratic Party that exists today is not what it used to be. They're not patriotic. They're not interested in the well-being of the country. They don't care about the future of this country. All they care about is power, and they're willing to do anything, anything to try to get that power back. Anything, folks. And we're not going to let them do it. We're not going to let them do it. So last night, President uh, Trump, he wasn't watching the Oscars either because he was hosting the National Governors, Associ Governors Association inside the White House. And after he gives his toast to the governors there, he, he welcomes uh, President, uh, sorry, Governor McAuliffe to make a toast. But before he hands over the microphone to, to Governor McAuliffe, he goes, this is a guy whose political career I just destroyed. Yeah. And he wasn't kidding. He wasn't kidding. And McAuliffe wasn't laughing. Trump. Trump. I love that guy. All right. Not, not McAuliffe. I don't love that guy. Um, you know something? Healthcare in this, this country has gotten so much worse. So much worse since Obamacare was passed. Now the Democrats made all these promises. They were going to bring down the cost of health care and they were going to improve health care in the United States. But the exact opposite has happened. I've been talking to a lot of you, a lot of you right in this audience, who told me that you lost your health care insurance because it became too expensive. So many of you, your premiums, they didn't go down, they went up. Up, my sister, she's got a small business. She tells me that's her number one bill in her family. It's an absolute shame, and the real shame too is not only is the cost prohibitive, but the quality of our health care has gone down. That's because a lot of providers, a lot of health care workers, a lot of physicians and others, they're getting out of the business. They're getting out. It just doesn't pay anymore. Too much government regulation. Do you know that more than 50% of the cost for our veterans, the health care for our veterans through the VA, more than 50%, by the way, any veterans here today? Yay! Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service, gentlemen. More than 50% of the VA's cost for health care for our veterans doesn't even go to veterans care. It's administrative. It's administrative. That is a shame. 
That is a shame. That is a real stain upon the fabric of our country. Our veterans are our number one citizens. They deserve the best health care that the United States has to provide, Amen. not some of the worst. Amen. So what does that tell you? What that tells you is, is that the federal government, when it puts together a program, when it puts together a program for, for providing health care, it's inefficient. It's not high quality. It's not good. And so what we have today with Obamacare is poor quality health care for those who are being served at very, very high costs. Because a lot of the costs are going for administration. It's not efficient. And so I want to announce today that it is my intention as governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia to work together with the Trump administration to block grant Medicaid funds to the Commonwealth of Virginia and design a health care system for Virginians by Virginians. Yay! You know, Medicaid made up 5% of Virginia's budget in 1985. Today, it accounts for 22% of the, of, the, of the state's budget. 22% and growing. That's without Obamacare. 22% and growing. You know what that means? That means that money, funding for all other services, whether it's higher ed or K-12 or transportation or economic development, it's all being pushed aside because more and more of the state's budget is being gobbled up by health care. So here's what we're going to do. After we work together and we design a system for Virginia by Virginians to provide a health care system that is better quality, that is lower cost, we're going to pass a constitutional amendment to cap Medicaid spending in, the, in Virginia at 20%. And as the economy grows, and it's going to grow, and I'm going to get to that in a moment, as the economy grows, we are going to finance the biggest tax cut in Virginia's history. And we're going to start right here, right here. Do you know, and I know there's a couple of you from the state of Tennessee. Where are you? All right. Thank you. Welcome to, welcome to the great Commonwealth. So in Tennessee, folks, they're doing some things right. Because in Virginia, we've been complacent. Instead of reducing taxes in Virginia, we had the biggest tax increase in the Commonwealth's history in 2013. But in North Carolina, in North Carolina, they took their highest marginal income tax rate in 2010. It was 7.75%. They've been ratcheting it down ratcheting it down and now the highest marginal income tax rate in Tennessee is 5.49 percent as of January 1st and guess where the jobs are going they're going to North Carolina and they're going to Tennessee and they're going to all the states that have been getting off the backs of businesses that have been getting off the backs of citizens that have been reducing their taxes that's where the jobs are going folks We've lost 60,000 manufacturing jobs in the state of Virginia since 2010. 10,000 jobs a year that we're losing. All because we're sitting here complacent and instead of reducing taxes, we're increasing taxes. And that's the wrong thing that has never worked to generate economic growth. It's always reduced economic growth and made people miserable. Right. And we're going to reverse that when I'm governor of the Commonwealth. Yeah. Yeah. And here's how, and here's how. It's very difficult, very, very difficult for any locality, for any business in Virginia to compete with our southern neighbors and our western neighbors because their income taxes are lower. And most of the jobs that are created across the country are created by small businesses, not huge corporations, small businesses. And most small businesses pay tax at the personal income tax rate. They're not incorporated. 
So they pay tax just like you and I do at the, at the personal income tax rate. The only way that we can help small businesses to create more jobs and allow them to keep more of their money is to reduce the marginal income tax rate in the Commonwealth. So it's very, very difficult if you're one of these four localities, Washington, Lee, Scott, or the city of Bristol. Why? Because they border Tennessee. And in Tennessee, they don't have an income tax. So imagine trying to convince a company to move into your county, into your city, into Washington, Lee, or Scott counties, or the city of Bristol, when they can simply, that business can go right to the other side of the street, literally the other side of the street in Bristol, and enjoy no state income tax. So we're going to fix that, folks. I want to announce today that when I'm governor, we are going to start by eliminating altogether the income tax in the counties of Lee, Scott, and Washington, and the city of Bristol altogether. We're going to wipe it out. And we are going to see an economic renaissance in this state that no one has ever seen before. And it's going to get started right here in southwest Virginia. Now, my opponent on the Republican side, I call him Establishment Ed, he likes talking about things he's planning to do. He doesn't, never gives any specifics, no details, nothing. So, you know, when I went down to Charlottesville, for example, and we were mobbed by all those lunatic bearded ladies, I said, over my dead body are we going to remove a statue of a great Virginian of a great American, Robert E. Lee. That's what I said. Ed, he said he was okay with that. So what do you think about that? You know what, with Republicans like that, we don't need Democrats. Because that's essentially the same thing, isn't it? It's the same thing, we're tired of the establishment. They, they might sound a little bit different from Democrats, but really, in fact, they're the same thing. They're the same thing. I've been standing up to liberals in Northern Virginia for a long time. I govern the second largest county in the Commonwealth of Virginia, Prince William County. I'm directly elected as chairman. It's, it's a bit like being a, a big city mayor. Four times. It's a county of 454,000 people, and it's a 60-40 Obama county. But I've been able to win. And the reason is I've been able to deliver. I don't just talk, others talk, I deliver. We cut $185 million out of the base budget in the first year that I controlled the budget. We brought down by a record amount, a massive $400 per house tax cut the very first year that I controlled that state, the county's budget. And now our, our tax bills in Prince William are 30% lower than the rest of Northern Virginia. And that's why I can say with credibility and confidence that I've already done it. I know how to slash spending and I know how to cut taxes. And that's why we're going to get it done all throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Yeah. There's a lot of other issues I'm going to tap, just touch on one other, one other. And that is, you know, when I became chairman of the board there and we had some cruel murders and other serious crimes committed by illegal aliens in Prince William County. And I worked with the federal government to implement the nation's toughest crackdown on illegal immigration. And so far, and by the way, Arizona followed us, they adopted the Prince William County model. So far, from my county alone, we have handed over to the federal government more than 7,500 criminal illegal aliens. Our violent crime rate plummeted 48.7% in three years. The Washington Post called that a coincidence. We know that it's not. We know that it's not. Because I'll tell you something. Even wacko lefties, like the ones who are across the street here, if you ask them this question, if somebody comes into our country illegally, and then while they're here, 
they break the law, commit a crime against you or a member of your family, should that person be allowed to stay in the United States? No. Absolutely not. On November 8th, as, as much as anybody else in this country, and I'll tell you why. We knew that when she chose a favorite son of Virginia, that it was going to be hard to win Virginia. We just wanted to suck resources out of the Clinton campaign, and they outspent us 20 to 1 in Virginia. That was funding that the Clinton campaign couldn't use in Pennsylvania, couldn't use in Wisconsin, couldn't use in Michigan. They had their main surrogates here the weekend before the election. We tied them down. They were forced to defend Virginia because of your efforts. And because of that, we were able to win the country in 2016. And in 2017, we're going to take back the Commonwealth. Thanks a lot, everybody.